So you're ostensibly doing what you're supposed to. You're watching what you eat, you're training, and you think you're in a calorie deficit. But for whatever reason, the weight on the scale keeps going up. Why are you not losing weight with diet and exercise? Well, let's talk about it. First of all, I specifically said scale weight because this doesn't necessarily mean that you aren't losing fat, reducing adiposity, and or gaining muscle. But we're talking specifically about the weight on the scale. Now let's first address the concept of calories. What is a calorie specifically? A calorie is a unit of measure, specifically a measure of energy. It's the amount of energy it takes to raise the temperature of a gram of water, exactly one degree Celsius. That energy is contained in the chemical bonds of the matter of our food. We of course use ATP as our currency for energy, but on a macro scale, the concept of calories gives us a better idea of how much energy a food is worth. So with that understanding and the understanding that we cannot create matter or energy out of nothing, how can it be that in a caloric deficit, we are seemingly increasing in mass? The quick answer is we aren't actually, but there are some other things that might be going on in the background that we're gonna address in this video. The first obvious answer is possible operator error, meaning that you may think that you're in a calorie deficit and you may have even tracked that you're in a calorie deficit. However, you aren't in actuality. That oil that you drizzled on your salad when you accounted for the vegetables and the little bit of cheese and the chicken or whatever, well, one tablespoon of that oil can be almost as many calories as an entire can of tuna. Another thing that often gets miscounted when people are tracking calories is alcohol. One shot of vodka, for instance, has no carbs, but it's still 64 unaccounted for calories. Another big contributor is snacking. If you look at most popular chip brands, popcorn, things like this, for instance, Ruffles or Lay's, you have 11 chips a serving, 17 chips a serving. That sounds like a lot, but really that's all of about two handfuls worth. You decide to yourself, ah, oh, well, you know, I deserve it. I can have an extra handful or two of chips. Well, you do that a couple days per week, every week, the calories stack up real quick. For this and a host of other reasons, if you're actively training for a reduction in adiposity, I highly recommend you just don't snack. Okay, so now the next thing, which is kind of obvious, but sometimes people don't think about it, is just the food load. If you wake up and weigh yourself and you haven't used the bathroom, you just might have extra food and liquid still in you. Biology is action over time, and that includes digestion and hydration. So you might just not have digested all of your meal, particularly if it's very bulk forming and fibrous, like you eat a lot of vegetable matter or um, sinewy types of meat, like steak as opposed to ground beef or something that uh, you know kind of falls apart a little bit easier, like white fish. That food could still just be sitting in your intestine getting worked on by your gut bacteria. And the extra pound or two that you see on the scale is reflective of that. Now let's talk about fluids because that's another thing that can significantly impact your scale weight whether or not you've actually gained matter, fat or muscle. As we know, sodium draws water into cells. A lot of highly processed foods, foods that you buy at restaurants, and even a lot of food that you get at the grocery store might be injected with sodium and other preservatives, number one, to increase the flavor, but also number two, to increase the shelf life. So while that may not necessarily affect the macros or the calories of the food item, but its consumption might come with a little bit of unplanned or unwanted uh, fluid accretion. We also have to acknowledge uh, hormones can be involved in some of this fluid retention. I'm not going to get into that in this video because that's a completely separate topic. I just want to touch on it briefly 
as a possible contributing factor. But then of course, there's everyone's favorite hormone to bag on, cortisol. There's no love lost for cortisol because when is cortisol expressed strongly? When we're tired, when we're stressed out, when we're underfed? Well, that's simply because cortisol is a fight or flight hormone that comes out to liberate energy during our times of need, during fight or flight situations. Accompanying high levels of cortisol is usually a lot of fluid retention to maintain proper cell function, cushion joints, etc. People look at cortisol as the problem, but cortisol is the outcome. The problem is something on the front end that we are doing wrong to ourselves. Possible, but least likely overtraining, more likely under eating, most likely under recovering. You want to lose weight, gain muscle, manage stress, and overall just be more healthy? You have to manage sleep, folks. That's absolutely essential. Another thing that can affect your deficit calculation is a down regulation of energy expenditure for pulling on the diet and exercise levers too hard. What you want to do ideally is pull back on the food a little bit and push up on the exercise a little bit. Too much too soon without allowing your body to kind of gradually and comfortably adapt to the changes can cause a reduction in your total daily energy expenditure. In other words, you train so hard that you hardly move the rest of the day, which then has a net negative effect and further skews your calorie deficit calculation on top of all the other factors that we previously discussed. Then of course I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, illness, health conditions, things like this can also negatively affect your scale weight. But that's a discussion that's outside of the scope of this video. So, if you are dieting and exercising and ostensibly in a calorie deficit and you are still gaining scale weight, you are not accruing extra dimensional mass somehow and violating thermodynamics, there is a perfectly rational reason that we can probably suss out. Most likely some combination of miscalculating your actual amount of calories, fluid retention, under recovering, and or just still having food mass inside your system. But don't let the scale weight fool you. Diet and exercise work. And that momentary jump in scale weight is probably just a proximal reaction to something easily correctable and you're still on your way to a better, fitter you. So don't get discouraged, folks. Stay in the fight.